Hello, and welcome to this second video on using Blender for video editing. Last time we went over the basic user interface, uh, some of the quirks about it, and how to switch over to the video editing screen and loading in a video using the add menu. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start now by once again going into the video editing screen. And I'm going to resize this, shift it over because I don't really use it. Uh, so again, last time we went to the add menu with a left click and then went into movie to, to bring in our video. But this time I'm going to show you how to use drag and drop. It's very easy. Click and drag and drop. And that's it. So now we have our video. And now I want to turn your attention over to this pane on the right. This is the, the properties and settings for the strip that we've just created by bringing in the video. Uh, if I scroll down here, we'll see some interesting things. Uh, let's start by talking about here this. This is the uh, actual original dimensions of the video. It's 960 by 540. And if we look up here, this is the length in terms of frames. So how many how many frames long is this video? And based off of the current frame rate of the Blender project, uh, the final length of this strip of this video is 30 seconds. Now, one thing to show you uh, is if I scroll with my, use my mouse wheel to, uh, to pull back, I'm going to zoom out. You can see these lines here, they represent the start and end range for, for the, the rendering or end playback uh, range. So, this, so basically, as you can see, these bars of the strips extend past that. In other words, if we were to create our video now, if we were to try to render uh, and create our output video, it would not be the entire video. It would just be, let me keep scrolling, uh, zooming out. It would only be not even, was that a third of the, of the full video length? But we can change that. Down here, we have our start and end ranges. So right now it's set to one, the first frame. In, in the sequencer, and then it stops at 250. Now again, if we go back up here to the properties, we see that the length of this is 722. So I can just click in here and type 722, press enter. And now you can see that the this line has shifted over. Now our, now our project is going to be the f matching in terms of the uh, the number of frames that we will uh, create or play back. So if I hit the uh, play button, which is this button down here, it'll start playing and you can see the, the bar. Oh, so let me, sorry, let me mute that. Um, we'll see that the bar will, the green bar, which shows our current position within the sequencer, within the time, is slowly moving around, moving across from left to right. And it'll play through the entire clip because we have uh, adjusted our endpoint. Uh, one thing about this is that uh, once it hits the end, it'll just jump back to the start. So actually, as it's playing, I can go ahead and click to jump it around. And you can see I'll just let it play from this point. And it'll just come right back here and just loop. That's standard behavior for Blender. Now, how to stop it? You have a few options. There's a uh, this X, this red X here, uh, which is also duplicated here. Uh, you can press either of those and that'll stop playback. If I start playback again, I can also press this pause button, which appears after you start playing. You can also press the escape key and that'll do it too. Uh, and speaking of hotkeys, there's other, other hotkeys to know about is uh, the Alt A. Alt A is what you can press to start playing back instead of clicking on the play button. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you in, in this session. So hope that helps. And uh, next time we'll be talking about uh, how to uh, change the layouts, change what you see on the screen, as well as changing the properties of your video project. Okay, uh, so thanks and bye for now.